Hello and welcome to London Shoes. This is a series of journeys through some of the more unusual and perhaps lesser known historical aspects of this magnificent city of London. My name is Jeff Clements and I'm a Londoner born and bred. I've lived, worked and socialised in London throughout my entire life and I have a deep passion for its history, its people and its culture. You can find out more about that on my website www.londonshoes.blog. So, why not put on your London shoes and take a walk with me and let's see what we can find. My London shoes have brought me to Limehouse, London E14. Just a small area by the River Thames, but a place that is rich in nautical and social history. We're currently in Narrow Street, which is the longest and the oldest street in Limehouse. As you can see from these fine Georgian buildings behind me, which date right way back to the 1700s. The earliest reference to the area of Limehouse itself dates right back to 1356, when the district was known as Le Linhosts because of its connection to the lime kilns used in the pottery industries that operated from there in the 14th century. Because of its location on the Thames, particularly in relation to the currents, etc., Limehouse was the ideal place for unloading ships and boats. In fact, the very first wharf was built here in 1348. In 1766, the Limehouse Bridge Dock was opened, and that was to enable small vessels with small cargoes to unload, and so that the cargoes could be distributed via the Limehouse Cut. And the Limehouse Cut was a separate canal, man-made canal, that was built from here and went across to the River Lee, thus cutting out the bendy bit of the Thames that you'll see. Although most of the trading ships' cargoes were unloaded further up the Thames at the Pool of London, the Limehouse Basin was opened in 1820 as the Regent's Canal Dock, specifically to transport unloaded smaller goods and cargo onto barges in the Regent's Canal, making Limehouse an important connection between the Thames and the canal systems, where cargoes could be transferred from larger ships to smaller canal boats. The basin and the Limehouse Cut were linked together in the early 19th century, but over the following hundred years, the use of the Limehouse Basin as a major distribution hub eventually declined with the growth of the railways. So much so that as a result of the development of technology, the Limehouse Basin became one of the very first London docks to close in the late 1960s. From the Tudor times, right up until the late 1800s, Limehouse, like a lot of London's Docklands areas, saw a lot of immigration. Mainly it'd be sailors disembarking at the docks while they were in between jobs. Limehouse was no exception. A huge Chinese community built up in Limehouse throughout the 1800s. And the Chinese were quite prominent here, dealing with tea through the docks and dealing with opium through the docks, etc. Limehouse became notorious for its opium dens, it was also famous for its Chinese laundries, and as a result, the area developed its own Chinatown district, the very first in London, and Limehouse even had its own Confucian temple. This caused quite a few social problems in the area, especially in the late 1800s, and Londoners became quite prejudiced against the Limehouse Chinese. These attitudes were not helped by popular books, such as the Fu Manchu series, which focused on Limehouse opium dens and its criminal problems. Even Arthur Conan Doyle had Sherlock Holmes regularly coming to Limehouse in his novels in his search for opium. The influence of the Chinese is still around in Limehouse and Poplar today, namely with the streets. We are in Peking Street now, there's Canton Street, there's Meking Street and a couple of others that reference the Chinese communities that were once here. If you're ever in need of a drink in this area, then why not check out Limehouse's most popular tourist attraction, one of them anyway, and one of the East End's most popular tourist attractions, and that's the Grapes Public House in Narrow Street. There's been a pub on this site for over 500 years, and to think this wonderful Georgian building has survived the Blitz, redevelopment, everything's been thrown at it, and it's still here to enjoy a pint. It was once the favorite drinking den of the author Charles Dickens, who used it as an influence by referring to it as the Six Jolly Fellowship Porters Pub in the opening chapter of his 1865 book, Our Mutual Friend. In 2011, 
the legendary actor Sir Ian McKellen and a couple of his mates bought the pub and still own it to this day. The barman told me that Sir Ian is particularly fond of the Monday evening quiz nights and behind the bar is the actual wooden staff he used when portraying the character of Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit films. Thanks for watching and I really hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you want to find out more about London's more unusual, lesser known historical aspects, then check out my website, www.londonshoes.blog. Cheers. Thank you.